In this video, I'm going to quickly run you through setting up your Creality Sonic Pad and connecting it with your Creality 3D printer. This is the first video in a short series that will not only get your Sonic Pad controlling your 3D printer, but will show you how to tune your settings to get the most out of not only the Sonic Pad, but any setup running Clipper. If you don't have a Sonic Pad yet, then check out my review, or if you want the TLDR version, it's great if you don't want the hassle of setting up multiple bits to do the same job. If you plan on buying a Sonic Pad, then check out the purchase links with a discount code below for a great deal. As I said, this is the first in a series of short guides that will get you started with your Sonic Pad. By the end of this series, you'll have Clipper firmware installed on your 3D printer, your Sonic Pad connected to your 3D printer, and your first print complete. If you're wondering what Clipper is, it's the 3D printer firmware that the Sonic Pad uses to control and enhance the hardware of your 3D printer. If you have a 3D printer that doesn't come up in the list of supported models on your Sonic Pad, then you'll need to configure a couple of files separately to tell your Sonic Pad all about your machine and how to talk to it. Click on this link to go to the video that tells you how to do that. If you have a Creality 3D printer that you've bought in the last few years, then the chances are it will be supported with a pre-configured profile on your Sonic Pad. The first thing I would advise doing before even turning on your Sonic Pad is to find the latest Marlin firmware for your 3D printer as a backup. To be able to control your firmware, the Sonic Pad is going to override the firmware on your 3D printer. This may seem daunting, but it's almost as simple as updating a smartphone and I'll show you how to do it. If for any reason you want to revert back to controlling your 3D printer without the Sonic Pad, then you'll need to reinstall Marlin firmware. I'll link to some resources for finding firmware for your machine in the description below. Just find the right file for your 3D printer and save it on your computer just in case you might want it later. Okay, now we have a backup, it's time to start playing. Plug in and turn on your Sonic Pad. Once it's powered up, select your language, read and accept Creality's privacy policy and select your region. Once you've done this, your pad will try to find a wireless network to connect to. If you see your Wi-Fi network, select it and type in your Wi-Fi password. If not, you can type in all of the details manually after selecting the Add Network option. You don't have to give the Sonic Pad a Wi-Fi connection. You can give it an Ethernet connection directly to your router if you like. Or you don't have to connect it to a network at all if you don't want to. You just won't be able to connect to it and control your 3D printer remotely if you don't. Once you've done this, you'll have the opportunity to give your Sonic Pad a different name if you want to. Click Next Step and we can get on to setting up the printer connection. In this next stage, we not only have to select our Creality 3D printer's model, but also what control board and chip it has. Creality have had to use different chips and control boards in their 3D printers over the last few years, and you need to select the right one here. The only real way to find out what your 3D printer has is to have a look and see what's written on them. Depending what model you have, this may just mean undoing a cover, but most likely you'll need to carefully lay your printer on its side so you can get access into the base. Once you have access to your control board, read what's written on a large square black chip and write it down. Also, make a note of the model of control board you have. My Ender 3 version 2 has an STM32F-103 chip and a version 4.2.2 board. I can now use this information to select the correct option from the list of Creality printers I can add on my Sonic Pad. I didn't need the chip information for this model, but you might. I also have a CR Touch bed probe installed, so I'm selecting the Ender 3 version 2 with a 4.2.2 board with the CR Touch label. After selecting your model and clicking on Next Step, it will show you where it wants you to plug in your SD card via a USB adapter. Pay attention to which port of the Sonic Pad it wants you to use. You can use the SD card out of your 3D printer. All it's going to do is write one file to the root folder on your SD card. All the other files will still be there. Once you have inserted your card, select to flash the firmware. Once the Sonic Pad is happy that it's written the firmware to something, it will tell you to insert it into your 3D printer, but make sure it's turned off first. Now, when you turn your 3D printer on with this SD card inserted, it will overwrite your firmware with Clipper firmware. The only way to use your 3D printer after this will be with a USB cable connected to your Sonic Pad. You won't be able to change anything on your 3D printer's screen, in fact the screen will most likely not even work anymore, and without your Sonic Pad your 3D printer will be completely unusable. This is why I told you earlier to find firmware for your 3D printer. If you want to revert back to Marlin firmware instead, then delete this .bin file that's just been saved to your SD card and replace it with the one that you downloaded earlier, and then follow this same step to reinstall Marlin firmware. With your SD card loaded with firmware inserted into your 3D printer, turn it on, then connect a USB lead from the port on your 3D printer to the USB port it's now telling you to use. 
View the USB schematic if you're not sure which is which. Once the firmware has finished updating and the Sonic Pad can then connect your 3D printer, you'll get a message saying that it has been successful at the bottom of the screen. When you click on Next Step, the Sonic Pad will take you into the next stage of setup, where it will get you to check a couple of things before running you through everything else you need to do before you can start printing. Click here for the next part of my walkthrough guide where I show you how to finish the basic setup process and get printing. I'll see you there.